Hello guys, Zuljin here and welcome to the first episode of Overfall, a fantasy role-playing game of rough diplomacy and tough action. Overfall is a great little roguelite that I've been watching on Steam for a little while, where you have two heroes that journey across the high seas in search of a lost king. Uh, there's random encounters in here, the world is dynamic, it's ruled by a number of races in constant conflict, and it's up to you to interact with them however you see fit, like to help them or betray them. You can unlock new classes, weapons, trinkets, and skills as you progress in the game, but there's permadeath, so what you start with, you can die and you lose all that progress, but you unlock as you get it through something like a game score. So I'll explain a little bit more as I go through. We're going to start a new game, and here are the couple characters that you start with. You start with, there's, there's no classes unlocked at first. There are some classes that you can unlock, but right now we have a fighter and a cleric. So I'm going to start out with these as I named them in my first playthrough. Now, I've played through this a few times already, and I've died and I've unlocked a few things, but I'll go over those with you. Uh, and we're going to start off with my beautiful wife, Tracy. So Zuljan and Tracy are going to go out and into the world. I'm not going to make any changes here. Uh, I'm basically going to go with the baseline stuff that you get. I don't have a whole lot of unlocks anyway, but okay. So, you've made it through the portal and back in the home. I can't believe my eyes. You're them. It's been three centuries since you entered that portal, and now you're back. So, this goes into some different dialogue options. I will be going through with those, but today I just want to show you some gameplay and kind of explain how it goes. It says, we've been here before. We know it all. It's because I have been here before. All right, so you can embark. So, this is the overworld map. The overworld map, you can basically steer anywhere. All of these different islands and ships you can interact with. If you hover your mouse over it, it'll show you. The Forsaken ship, for instance, is the race, Forsaken. You can see the reputation of all the races here and also these type of currencies, so to speak. Uh, not necessarily all currency. Frags are currency, they're used to purchase things, as well as dust is also used to trade for some stuff in addition to uh, trading in for some different abilities. Uh, you also have runes, which you can use for resurrection and protection, and food, which you can use to heal. Uh, you have your character stats up here, which shows you like their stats, their life, what trinkets they have, and who's all in your party. And this indicates the time of day, and it's possible to check history by pressing H. You also have a timeline here of basically about some mysterious invaders that start pouring from a portal, and their objective is to build a shipyard. So a little bit of mystery with all of this. There's a, there's a little map in the corner, and this is the portal right here that basically the... The, the invaders are going to come through. So the races right now, you start off with neutral reputation of everything and you can interact with everything like I said before. When you move your mouse, like I can click and I can move. You see how time speeds up? Basically everything moves in a slow motion, almost like a pause state until you're ready to move. So the first thing we'll do, we'll just interact straight away. And the noises are kind of loud. I apologize that. If you lower the sound effects, all the ambient sounds go away. So I'm going to try to avoid doing that. First encounter. This ship is crewed by a group of Forsaken, whose cloudy eyes and mellow tones seem to contain realms of mystery. Speak, stranger. So this is one of the race of people. They are uh, they're pretty rough looking. And these are the way that interactions are set up. Now, there's a few things that we can do here. We can just attack and destroy the ship. We can ask them directions to their homeland. We can ask if they need any help or sail on. So if you ask them directions to their homeland, they're not willing to give you that information. To get their aid, one must befriend the Forsaken. So you can actually contract the help of these guys as you go, but you need to gain some rep. The way you do that is doing missions for them, so to speak. So let's ask if they need any help. The Forsaken mark an island on your map. May the sun forgive us all, wonders. So we do have it. Now we still have the ability to attack and destroy their ship, but there's already some enemies that we have, and we're going to inadvertently make enemies here and there too. Uh, the Vorn ship is chasing us. They're straight up going to try to kill us. We got to get away from them. Those are like the bad guys, the Vikings, so to speak, and they are really, really hard, so I'll avoid those at all costs. You'll see them. They'll catch me sooner or later. Seems like a boat owner is a merchant. Hello, adventurers. Would you like to trade? Sure, we can trade. So this is basically the way it goes. This is the, the statistics that you have right now. We have five food, two runes, two dust, and four frags. And you can trade here. So if we want more 
food, for instance, we can get rid of these. The, these Basically, it'll cost us two food is what's going to happen here. Oh, well, two frags to do that. And the currency rates are pretty much the same all around. Now, frags aren't that as important as food, but we can always get food from inns, and the exchange rate seems to be pretty regular. Dust, on the other hand, is relatively hard to get, so we could trade that for dust, but I'm still going to keep the frags just in case I have to buy food. So I'm not going to do any exchanges with the merchant right now. He can tell us where the closest bazaar is at, where you could use to upgrade your weapons. And the bazaar quest is added. Uh-huh. All right. Let's set sail. All right. We have to get away from this, this ship here. They're chasing us. Basically, if we sail far enough away, things will happen where they can interact with other things or they'll lose interest. So... That's what we kind of hope for when that happens. You encounter a group of adventurers sailing the high seas. Ahoy, heroes. Heard any rumors of this gourd in the area? There's more than plenty around these areas, especially lately. Okay, leave and set sail. So when you do get something like that, you'll see that there's quest markers that appear on your map. Let's go ahead and sail to this island. We'll try to get away from these guys. Nope, they caught us. Okay, the Vorn ship spots you. Try to outmaneuver them, but they are too quick and you are boarded. So, there is no way to get out of this encounter right now. And these guys are incredibly difficult, which you're about to see. But, it's a good it's a good way to show you how the battle is, is going to happen. So, let's go ahead and battle. Uh, I, ex I fully expect to die here. So... Basically, that's RNG for you, baby. You know how that goes. So there's a couple of skills that we have, and there's three phases that you have. Now, let me try to explain this. First, it shows the order that people are going to perform their moves. So first, it's Zul'jin. Then it's going to be an enemy, the other enemy, Tracy, and then the third enemy. They already have some health loss here, which that could be from a fight that they had before when you saw that ship explode on screen. So anyway, you have the ability to kind of manipulate battles if you can run from them long enough and can weaken their state, which is going to help us tremendously. So anyway, you have three phases. You have a move phase, you have a utility phase, and you have an attack phase. And each character has abilities and sets that we'll go into in detail as we go. The first thing we can do is either move the character or do a heroic leap. Heroic leap does two damage next to foes, basically adjacent, and you can see where the cooldown and the empty hex is, or the range and stuff like that. Okay, so the range is adjacent. We can't reach anything right now, even with Heroic Leap. We could reach this guy, but it's probably a bad idea because these guys are just going to gang up on me, and basically, Heroic Leap is a good way to do like an AoE damage. See how the hexes light up all around that center tile? I'm going to try to get them to come in a little bit closer. So for now, we're just going to move. And we're only going to move, let's say, one tile. I don't want them to get too far. Now, the reason that I moved an adjacent tile is going to be an ability that Tracy has. But I'll show you that in a moment. Our utility phase is next. There's a few things we can do. We can apply some debuffs. There's a lot of buffs and debuffs into this game to pay attention to. But first, what we want to do is basically protect ourselves. Now, we have a couple of offensive abilities like Incapacitate, which applies Disarm and Immobilize to a target. We have Earth Crack, which applies Vulnerable and removes one buff from foes. And we have Unbreakable, which applies Vigor and removes two debuffs. Now, it doesn't tell you what Vigor does, but I'll explain to you. Basically, when you highlight or when you hover over one of the buffs above your head, it'll show you what it does. Vigor. Cannot be affected by bleeding, trauma, poison, burning, agony, tormented, bone poor, stacking by round. Alright, so basically we are immune to a bunch of effects which they can apply on us and will apply on us. And this is our attack phase. Now you can skip an attack phase by pressing E or just not doing anything or just pressing this button actually. So uh, there's a few abilities here which will go into depth when I actually hit them. And we'll let these guys kind of come in. Now, they're using some skills to buff themselves. You'll see that. And this guy's a ranged attacker, so that's probably bad. He has haste. Double the speed, stacking by round. And fury doubles the crit rate, or the critical rate, attack stacking by round. So, Tracy already took some damage here. There's a few things that we can do here. We can move. And she also has Faithful Pull, which pulls the target ally three hexes, applies protection, and restores two HP. Now, all of these skills have a cooldown, so once I use them, I won't be able to use them for another little bit. And I believe that this is, the cooldown is two. So, we'd have to skip two rounds before we can do this again. Now, it does apply protection. So, if we did that, we have the ability to apply protection to Zul'jin right away. And if you look at pull right here it shows 
like the the direction you can do it. Now I'm gonna pull Zuljin to me, and it's going to it would have healed him by two, and it also gave him that protection buff. So. Now I have the utility phase. Numbing Light applies regeneration and two stacks of Aegis. Now Aegis is like a, uh, a protection. It, it kind of erases their avoidance. There's also Dispel. You can remove two debuffs if cast on an ally or two buffs if cast on a foe. Now this guy has Fury and Haste. So if we were to cast Dispel on him, it would remove these two. And Scream applies Fear. Right now, what we're going to do is actually apply a regeneration to ourselves to start some healing, and it's going to apply Aegis, which is increases evasion by two turns, stacking by intensity. All right. Now we have the attack phase. So we have three abilities. Wave of Light deals three damage, applies Agony and Blind on a critical hit, the cooldown is 1 and the range is 1. We have Retribution deals 4 damage and Confusion. And Holy Nova, which deals 3 damage to adjacent foes and restores 2 HP to adjacent allies. So we're going to just do Retribution right now because that's like the basically the single target spell that we have. Alright, we did 4 damage. And he's got Confusion. Skips the utility phase, stacking by round. Alright, now... You'll see that the two heroes, the two enemies that I have here are on adjacent tiles. If we go next, let's see, they're both going to move here. So basically, by me moving in here, Dring is going to attack. They're both going to, I think. Let's see. No, actually, this other guy is going to attack. So it's basically going to be this guy and this guy that's next. Yeah, that's how it's going to go right there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Heroic Leap. Now, if I leap here, it's going to hit both of these guys for two damage. And that's what I'm going to do there. All right, two. Now, I have a few abilities that I can choose from. Incapacitate will use Disarm and Mobilized. And Earth Crack applies Vulnerable and removes one buff. And that is going to do very, very well. I think I'm going to take away this guy's Precision is what I should do. Uh, let's go ahead and Earth Crack. And I'm going to do that. Oh, it's an AoE. I forgot about that. All right. So it removed that and it actually removed haste from this guy, which is really good. Now, attack damage for us. We have th a choice of three abilities. Chop, which deals damage, applies bleeding 50% of the time. Cleave, which deals four damage, applies mortal wounds to targets with bleeding, and applies bone pour on a critical hit. So... If the target was bleeding, we would get the extra applies mortal wounds, basically. And this is execute. Deals 4 damage, applies blind 60% of the time, and deals 3 damage if target has less than 50% HP. So he doesn't have 50% HP, so execute would be... Basically, we would want to do blind, which decreases their accuracy. Well, this guy's already got increased received damage, and this guy has increased received damage. If we hit him once, it's good possibility that we would take him below 50%, and that way execute would kind of follow up with some good damage next round. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and chop him. All right, now he's below. Now he's not bleeding, so we didn't apply that, but... All right, he used a couple things on me, and we got a whole bunch of debuffs now. Dang, man, they're hitting me. All right, we got decreased speed, confusion, so we're going to skip the utility phase, bone pour, which deals one damage for each skill the unit uses, stacking by intensity, and chilled, halves the critic rate, stacks by round. All right, so that is not good. There's a few things that we can do here, which I think, let's do, the, let's move here. Now, we can use Dispel, which is going to remove two debuffs. Hopefully, it removes some good stuff. You can't really decide what it's going to remove. So, Bone Pour and Chilled are still on, as well as Confusion. So, we still won't have a utility phase, but it's better than nothing. And we have either Wave of Light or Holy Nova. So, Holy Nova is only adjacent tiles, so that's not going to affect us. But Wave of Light, we can, and it's kind of like a cone. And unfortunately, it's only going to hit one of them, but I'm still going to do it because it's a damage spell. All right, that did four damage. Very, very good. Now he's going to hit us. We got a couple of buffs. All right, move the character. I don't think I need a move here. I think what I need to do, well, I can move. Yeah, let's go ahead and move. That will that will make sure that they have to move as well, and maybe I can get a Holy Nova in to do really well. Okay, let's try to bleed this guy. 
Very good, and he's below 50% HP too. Alright, we're taking a lot of damage here. Hopefully I can use Retribution to hurt this guy. Oh no, he has a, a, a ranged attack. Alright, that is not good. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to get adjacent so that next turn we can use Faith Pull. And that'll heal him up a little bit. Uh, we're also going to use Numbing Light to give some reach into him. And we're going to use Retribution to kill him. Hopefully it hits. Yes! Alright, very, very good. So, one thread down, two to go. Wow, alright. He hit us for five, and I think we're dazed. So all we can do is attack here. This is bad, you guys. Let's try Execute, because he is below 50% HP. You can see that from the meter, but also if you wanted to make sure, you can look at who he is. Let's see, Thrall. When I, when I hover over him, you see at the top right, or the top middle, how Thrall's hit points go there. So he has eight out of current... Uh, what's his life? 18. So basically 9 would be half, 8 would be less than half, and that's what Execute shows. So, uh, let's use Execute on him. Alright, that did 7 damage. Now, he doesn't have any debuffs, unfortunately. So, oh, we healed. Now, that's because the regeneration just picked up. So that's very, very good. And Aegis has probably saved us from getting hit there, which is very, very, very good. Okay, let's use Faithful Pull. Can I not? Why? Oh, it's a different. I don't know why it's not in these directions. For some reason, I, I totally misread that. I guess it's not directly that we would have had to get like further back from him or something like that. Okay, so we can move here. What I think I'm going to do instead is just move here. That way I could use like the... Um, Oh, I can't get right there. I guess that's due to the fact that there is something in the way here. Anyway, I'm going to be able to use Holy Nova here. So, Dispel. Let's Dispel a couple of debuffs on us. Very good. And Wave of Light might hit them both too, huh? Yeah, Wave of Light would hit them both. Wave of Light can cause Blind on Critical, and it applies Agony 25% of the time. Holy Nova deals 3 damage to adjacent foes, and HP restores 2 to allies. But we're not in the range to heal that, so I think we're just going to use Wave of Light here. Alright, that destroyed one of them and did 2 damage to the other one. Now, we have the ability to do Heroic Leap again. I think we're going to do that, because that is going to do some extra damage for us. That's 3 damage right off the bat. We can do... let's see... Shield halves the critic rate stacks by round. If we were to do Unbreakable, it cast Vigor. I think Incapacitate would be better. Let's do Incapacitate so he can't run away. And it failed, apparently. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Cannot be effect. Ah, oh, we should have looked. He's enraged. He basically is immune to all of these effects right now, which kind of sucks. Okay. Cleave. Is he immune to Bone Pour? He is not immune to Bone Pour. We might want to do that, or we could inflict Bleed. Let's try Bleed. Alright, he is not bleeding. <laughs> Alright, ouch. That sucked. That was a hard hit, man. Okay, we can do Faith Pull, which is going to heal up Zul'jin a little bit. And we can do Nurturing Light. All right, now we got some regen stacked, and let's do Holy Nova, and this is going to both heal and hurt. There we go. So that's the best we can do. Now, he had a debuff on him called Mortal Wounds, which reduces the effectiveness of any received healing by 50%, which really, really sucked. But that's that's the, the way things go. Okay, we skipped that phase. Let's do... Let's do Unbreakable. Okay, that removed that debuff there, and we can also do Chop. And hopefully it just kills him. Okay. Technically, we should have did Execute, but 4 damage is going to do it anyway. Alright, we won the battle. I cannot believe that. Uh, I think I played that pretty well. Against all odds, you survived the vicious skirmish. You searched the Vorn ship for anything useful. Alright, so if you guys ever watched any of my Darkest Dungeon videos, or watched any Darkest Dungeon videos, which is uh, a game that just came out on Steam a little while back, uh, you basically have perks and 
faults, I guess. There's certain um, character traits that you develop after battles and adventures in there. And this game is kind of like that as well. You'll see that against all odds, you survived the vicious skirmish, you uh, searched the Vorn ship. These are the things that I got. So, Zul'jin gain lame, decrease speed by one while below 50% HP. So that's a negative perk that I got. Taking too many disruptions below the belt, this hero can't walk too much in dire situations. That's rough. And we also gain steady, which is a plus. Increases accuracy stat by four. So sometimes you get good, sometimes you get bad, sometimes you get both, sometimes you get neither. That's just kind of the way it plays out. And both characters can actually earn these as we go through battles. We also got some loot. We got four frags, which is kind of like the money, and two runes, which is pretty good loot. Okay, so now the health stats that's very loud i'm sorry but like i said uh the game volumes it's it's a beta version so it's a little bit hard i could try to adjust the volumes here let's see options sfx volume rip headphone users guys it does take away some of the subtle sounds that that add to the game experience so every once in a while we will hear that when a boat blows up i hope you don't mind all right so anyway you can see here that our health is still the same as what it was 10 out of 28 and Tracy is at 25 out of 26 so we could eat here now we have five food which you can see right here five food source of life can be used to heal party members when they're injured and we can feed the character to restore two HP for one food or 10 HP for five food I think we're gonna go with that all right there's a hollow ship scouting the area that's just going to interact with us here and let's see what happens the ship is crewed by hollows of a different type who stare at you demandingly okay this is another race they're kind of like an animal people so let's ask them we don't want to make any enemies here if we can avoid it so let's ask them if they need any help the hollows mark an island on your map it's not much it's not f much far away if you can sort things out there our brothers out for our brothers over there okay so basically they gave us a quest anyway we could attack them still and we can also ask directions to their homeland but we haven't gained them enough favor so we'll just sail on all right so we have a few things that we can do now there's the quest that they just gave us here I believe uh, aiding the forsaken no that's the forsaken quest and this is a Vorn ship we gotta get away from them Hopefully, oh, they caught us anyway. The Vorn spots you. Try to outmaneuver them, but they are too quick and you are boarded. I cannot believe. Two Vorn ships in a row, guys, is very, very bad luck. All right. I should have paid a little bit more attention, but it's kind of hard to do that in commentary and trying to introduce you guys to the game mechanics. So the only option we have is protect the ship. We're going to have to fight again, you guys. It sucks, but we're going to do it. All right. Let's just get, uh, we can't get right in there. I think I'm going to do the same thing as I did last time and just go a little bit up here. And I'm going to use Heroic Pull right away. Is it called Heroic Pull? I forgot exactly what it's called. Okay, we're going to use Unbreakable, which is going to give us Vigor and keep us immune to some effects. And we're going to skip the attack phase. Alright, this is going to suck. Oh, seven points! That's ridiculous! That's what I say. These guys are just unbelievably hard here. All right. So Tracy's up. Let's use Fateful Pull. All right. We did heal a couple points of damage, which is not seven, but holy cow. All right. And Numbing Light will give regen. All right. And there's nothing I can do right now. Well, I might be able to hit this guy. I sure can. Let's use, uh, let's use Retribution on this guy. All right. Four damage. I can't believe, man. This is such bad luck. All right, now we do have the ability to get in there, kind of like we did last time. Let's do it. Let's do it, you guys. Let's get all in their business. Uh, okay, we're going to use Earth Crack. And now I'm going to try to apply Bleed. And I'm going to try to apply it to this Shield Bear guy. Nine points! That was a crit, baby! Oh, that's what I'm talking about. All right. He used... What did he use... He used something that basically took away that ability. All right, that kind of sucks, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to move here, and I'm going to use the spell, which is going to take away Trauma and Crippled. Nice. And Wave of Light ought to hit this guy. All right, very good. Three points of damage. And I'm going to try to go get this guy. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Aegis to the to the rescue. Alright, I'm going to go kill this guy if I can. 
All right, let's do incapacitate just in case I miss him. All right, and chop. Well, let's use execute actually. Nice, six points. Okay, he's dead. He is dead. I cannot believe we're doing this well again. Oh no, five points of damage and I got immobilized. Skips the mobility phase. Yeah, oh wow, we also got blind. Decreases accuracy by five. That's not good. Uh, hopefully we'll have the spell up. If not, though, that's okay. Uh, we're going to move so we can use Holy Nova. Let's use Numbing Light. And let's use Holy Nova. That is going to heal and do damage. It's all about the tactics, you guys. Don't hit me hard. Please don't hit me hard. Please don't hit me hard. You hit me hard. Oh, and he's feared now. Look at the debuffs. See, this changes the battle so much, man. All right, I can't move. So we can use Unbreakable, which is going to take away some of the debuffs, which is really good. And I can't move, so I have to skip my attack phase, unfortunately. Oh, man. Dang it. Four points of damage. Really, really hurts. Okay, Faithful, as you can see, I'm not in range for anything, so I'll just have to move. I'm going to go ahead and move here. And I'm going to cast Scream to apply Fear. Actually, what does this do? Defiance cannot be affected by vulnerable days, shield, or mortal wounds. I think, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep us at bay a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and scream. That way, they're gonna be feared, and they should move five victims opposite the direction of the caster. All right. So we could use Wave of Light, or we can use Retribution. I think I'm gonna use Retribution because I couldn't use Holy Nova yet. All right, so we basically got away from this guy for one turn, which kind of mitigated some damage there. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and kill this dude. I want to get to where I can actually have Faith Pool used on me next turn. So I think I can't do that, though. I wish you can skip, like, movement phase and move after you attack, but I can't do that, unfortunately. So what I'll have to do here is, let's go ahead and move character. Actually, yeah, let's move. Well, I can only jump here, huh? Yeah, move or jump. Yeah, let's do it like this. Okay. Uh, Earthcrag, let's incapacitate him. He's incapped. And we'll go ahead and execute. All right, he's dead. Perfect. All right, we can use Faith Pull. Which won't actually pull him anywhere, but it will heal us. <laughs> and let's see. Numbing Light will cast Regen. Very good. And Wave of Light, it will hit him. And we'll do it. Hopefully it casts Blind on him. Yeah. Oh, Agony. We'll take that too. Agony basically deals one damage every turn for three turns. All right. Oh, no. What does he have? Fear again. I hate it. Okay, I can move closer though. And Rich, that's what we're going to do. With our, uh, with our jump skill. And we did some damage, which is good. Let's do... Let's do Unbreakable. Just to make sure we keep ourselves debuffed. And he's not bleeding right now, but... We're gonna try to apply Bone Pour on the critical hit. Let's do it. Okay, we did not crit him. But he does still have Agony, which is good. Okay, we don't need to move with Tracy. We could Dispel this bad buff on us <laughs> and we're gonna use holy nova which is gonna heal and hurt again man the tactics are real y'all the tactics are real okay move the character we don't need a move and we basically had the debuff that stopped us from using the utility phase which is confusion and last but not least executioner and that's it 10 damage Oh, against all odds, you survived the vicious skirmish. You searched the Vjorn ship for anything of use. So, our perks that we got, Tracy gained Adept Healer. 50% chance to apply reduction on direct heals, which means damage reduction for the next round. That's really, really good. Uh, what else do we have? Gain Craven. You gain 15% chance to apply fear to yourself at the beginning of each turn. Zuldian is turning out to be a coward. Okay, we got two runes and six more frags. This was very good for money, which I can't complain for. Okay, continue sailing. All right. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, upgrading weapons. You can upgrade your weapon skills with your frags by visiting bazaars spread across the ocean. Alright, guys. I cannot believe. Okay, let's... <laughs> I guess we're gonna get out of here, you guys. I need to visit a tavern and stuff. I'm sorry about all the noise, too. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give me some dap on that like button to show you support for the series, guys. And you can subscribe to the channel for more daily videos. I'll be back with another video soon, real guys. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, this is Zuljian signing off. And we'll see you next time. Let's just get in there for a little while. All right, get out. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let Vomit do some work. It looks like he's doing pretty good. Pretty good work, though. Yeah, come over here by this Jolly Chomp, man.